Now, next set, you got me for another 10 or another few minutes here because I have a fantastic surprise for you. I've got Roku. I've got Roku and I've got Christina Shepard, who, um, who is the director of national sales for Roku. And she's going to take about 10 minutes to talk to us about some pretty interesting things, actually. They've got some streaming industry updates. Uh, they've got a case study on a great OEM and some auto uh, category trends. So I'm really looking forward to this. Um, so Christina, uh, are you there, my friend? Let's see if we can get her in. And yeah. hi, how are you? Hey, uh, great. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me, John. Yeah, no, we're thrilled to have you. And um, you know, Roku's been doing lots of stuff with us as of late. So thanks for jumping on board with us here at this auto show. We're really looking forward to it. And um, and did I get it right? You're covering some pretty interesting things here. Was that the right kind of two or three things? Yeah, that's perfect. We're going to talk through kind of the Roku platform, some streaming industry insights, as you mentioned, and then deep dive into a few case studies and, and kind of inside look into what the auto category is doing with us. Awesome. Well, good. Well, um, if you do you have a, I guess you have a presentation, you want to pull that up. Let's make sure that looks good. And then I'll, I'll let you Share have the floor. Screen. In true Zoom fashion, let me know if you can see the right screen. Yep. Yep. Looks good. Yeah. Great. You, you, right, you got yeah. what well, actually just so you know I, we do we do see your next slide in your notes so um okay. sorry if you want to go into presentation mode i think yeah hold on one second sorry about that Pop displays is this right yeah there you go perfect perfect okay okay awesome. the floor is yours take it away we'll give you about 10 minutes and we'll talk to you on the other side great thanks john you got it Hi everyone, I'm happy to be here. This is really exciting. Um, I first kind of want to take a step back, just kind of introduce myself and talk about what I'm currently streaming, which tends to be our question of every Zoom meeting and every conference that we have. But I have been at Roku for four and a half years prior to that coming from the mobile world. So loving the emerging spaces in our industry. And prior to that was in print at News Corp. So a little bit of a different take. For me, I'm currently streaming two things similar in the fact that they're both, I would call them thrillers, but very different in every other way. Uh, the one on Netflix, which I would highly recommend, very kind of, you know, zeitgeist -y, um, about kind of, you know, online dating, et cetera, and matching up. And then another would be Riviera, which is on Amazon Prime, which is amazing just for nothing else for the fact that we can't travel right now. And it's set in the French Riviera. So like highly, highly recommended for that reason alone. So with that, going to walk through again, I know we teased this out, but again, really hit on Roku platform updates. We alongside all of our streaming partners have seen huge growth in the past year, as you all can imagine. So talk a little bit through that and also then deep dive into what is the auto category doing with Roku, right? What are the offerings they're most taking advantage of? So really deep dive into one view, which is our ad platform built for streaming, as well as kind of the auto category growth overall. Um, so to dive right into it, first I want to touch on Roku. So for those of you who are familiar with us, you know, we are both a device company with sticks and puffs as well as a smart TV. So our OS is built into about 12 OEMs from a television perspective. Looking at 2020, one in three smart TV sold in the United States was actually a Roku powered smart TV. So this is where our scale is coming from and how we are actually America's number one streaming platform, both in terms of active account and most importantly, in our stream. So if you look on the, the top left hand side, what's really important to understand about us is our direct consumer relationships. This is something really near and dear to the auto category because of our ability to aggressively target at scale on a deterministic basis. So what this means is we have 51 million Roku households that come in from those devices, and smart TVs. And then we actually have customer data on each and every one of those households that come in through the user flow when they sign up for their Roku device, right? So when you extrapolate this into a co-viewed household and understanding the amount of people per household, that 51 million active accounts translates to about 150 million streamers, which for those of you who know, the Super Bowl reached about 100 million. So this is 50% more than what the Super Bowl reached, which is again, huge, massive scale when you're thinking about the CTV space. And then next, going down to the Roku channel, this is our own and operated channel, right? So we have a med our media play is obviously a huge component of our offering and Roku channel is at the center of that. So it is our own and own channel. It launched in September, 2017 and has just continued to accelerate in terms of growth. So we're having, we see about 62 million streamers in the channel on a quarterly basis. And that translates to being the number two ad supported channel on the entire platform up against all the major players that you can imagine. 
And the Roku channel is only diversified in its content offering. It started with licensed TV and movie content and has since grown to have 150 live linear channels, including ABC News and Newsy and Cheddar, et cetera, as well as um, premium subscriptions in the terms of HBO and Showtime and Stars. And then most recently, through a variety of acquisitions, as you might have heard about, we've acquired the Quibi Library of Content, which is 75 titles overall, as well as this old house. So a lot of exclusive content will be available here, which will, again, only accelerate the growth of the channel on our own platform. And then last but certainly not least, and we'll touch on this a bit more later on, is our branded experiences. So as we're the platform and we get to see the full breadth of content, both in the Roku channel as well as across the entire platform. And based on the fact that we have close distribution deals with each and every channel partner on our own platform, we're able to curate really custom content experiences that brands such as yourselves can sponsor, right? So depending on your target audience and your tent pole that you want to align with throughout the year, we can curate content and then bring it for free to consumers, which all capitalizes on the fact that we're seeing huge growth in streaming hours in 2020 and into 2021, which is exactly what this slide shows us. So we can see here, we've been on a massive upward trajectory for the past, what this looks like six years, which is really exciting. What we saw during COVID, probably in terms of growth, what happened in six months could have taken, if not for that, two to three years to get to. So again, that definitely accelerated what was already happening. But what we know to be true is that that's only gonna continue to scale from here. Right, we have, you know, again, 51 million households with 60 billion hour stream in 2020, which was about 55% growth year over year. But most interestingly, we're not done yet, right? Like our platform has about 54% of the audience are cord cutters, meaning they in no way, shape, or form can access traditional TV through a linear subscription. But when we look at data talking about the future, we've seen that about 43% of traditional TV households plan to cut the cord in the next year. So we really expect to see this only grow from here, which is really exciting. And when going into kind of, again, as I was mentioning, some of the core offerings of Roku that our auto advertisers are leaning into, one, of you, one view is really one of them. So this is coming through our acquisition of DataZoo about a year and a half ago, our rebranded platform, one view, which is the ad platform built for TV streaming. And you can think of it as a, planning, buying, and measurement platform, both for Roku, all of OTT, as well as desktop and mobile. So truly an omni-channel platform. And the three core tenets of that are first and foremost audience. As I mentioned, we have that direct consumer relationship with everyone that signs up for, the, for a Roku account. And what that means for you all as brands, knowing that targetability is so important for the auto category, we basically take that consumer data we match it back to third parties like Axiom and Experian, which allows us to unlock the household. So through that, we can know HHI, number of children in the household, when they've shopped for a car, if they're in market for a car, not that they were in market six months to a year ago, but that they're in market now through all of the data integrations that we have with Polk and Foursquare, et cetera. So this is again, kind of the core tenant for identity of the Roku and OneView offering. And in addition, it's important to call out that privacy is so important to our core offering. As a platform with fully 100% opt out and in capabilities, we wanna make sure also that we're keeping that integrity of privacy for our consumer base. Next, going into media, we touched on it in terms of the Roku channel, which is the core of our offering. But to expand outside of that, through our distribution deals, we have 100 channels that we work with that where we get a cut of their inventory. So we can think about that as anywhere from 10 to 30% of the inventory that a given channel might run is served by Roku. So that opens up the massive scale that you're able to get across all the premium channels where roughly about 99% of the reach on our own platform lives. And in addition to that, when you think about the OneView offering, being that it is an app platform, you're able to bring in third-party deals as well. And the benefit here and what we're gonna talk about in terms of our case study on the next slide is the ability to really get holistic reach and frequency, not just on the back end, but also the ability to optimize in real time, which then brings me to measurement. Measurement is also the core of all of what we do, right? We want to make sure that we're bringing the best of television and the best of digital together. And that means targetability on the front end, as well as measurement on the back end. And that can come in a variety of fashions, both our own first party data solutions, such as reach and frequency incremental reach studies, 
as well as a variety of third parties through Polk, Foursquare, Ninth Decimal, et cetera, and more. So again, as John teased out, we really wanted to make sure we showed you in action what exactly our outer advertisers are doing and working with us. So we want to show you a Lexus case study. We're really excited about this. They basically came to us and really wanted to understand frequency management from linear to OTT down to digital, which is something that no other ad platform really has the ability to do because we have a hugely large footprint in terms of our ACR data, which for those of you who aren't familiar, it's automatic content recognition. So it's our ability to actually understand what a user is exposed to on the linear side of the house through whatever's coming through that glass. So that is ad exposure, that is, you know, if they were exposed to a competitor auto brand and then you want a conquest against them. And then in this case, it's also the ability to understand what households have been exposed to an ad on linear and whether to suppress or target that household. So in this case, through all of those tactics, right, bring all of their holistic buys into the Roku platform, and then also leveraging on our ACR data and the optimization tactics, what that resulted in was 66% of the reach for that one view campaign was incremental to their linear campaign, right? So the ability to reach net new audience, they would not have otherwise reached. And then what that meant, all the optimization tools, 35% additional reach came from just the fact that we implemented a holistic cap across all of their media, right? Something they wouldn't have seen or wouldn't have been able to get if they fragmented their buys amongst multiple partners. And then lastly, and most importantly for all of you is the fact that this all means better business outcomes, right? So this led to a one and a half times return on investment from all of these campaign optimizations. And next, there's, there's one view, the ability to run targeted campaigns, right, in evergreen fashion. There's also our ability to run branded experiences, which is what we wanted to talk through here. So our branded experiences, again, as I mentioned on the prior slide, come from our partnerships with our content, uh, our content partners, as well as the own exclusive content that we have with our own Roku channel. So what we're able to do is take the advantage of the fact that we're the platform, Take that home screen unit, which literally takes up a third of the screen on the Roku home screen, which is quite literally the only way in which anyone who turns on their Roku device needs to see in order to go watch other content, right? So the best part about this home screen ad unit is that you'll be the first ad that anybody sees on the Roku platform before they go into Netflix and see no ads for four hours, as well as before they see any other auto ad on the platform. And this unit has the ability to build reach quick, right? So of the 51 million households, the 150 million streamers, you're the first thing they see. So in this case, what Lincoln did for a vehicle launch was wanted to curate what we call a stream the hits package. So they basically worked with us to acquire content for various concerts and music and basically created a hub all targeted to their audience with their ad running throughout. Right? So they were able to get their audience engaged with the brand, spending more time for a free experience brought to them by the brand. And what we've seen is that the combination of evergreen targeted video, like what you saw the Lexus did with OneView, in combination with the brand experience that Lincoln did, actually results in four times that a lift in purchase intent, which is very important, I would imagine, for the tier one OEMs. And then, of course, taking it a step further with OneView, the ability to actually price and buy off of business outcomes, shopability, site visits, dealer visits, which we know is very important for tier two as well. So all of this in combination is what has allowed us to see a huge growth within the auto category overall. So you can see from 2019 to 2020, we saw 2x the growth that we saw from 2018 to 2019, which I think we can all agree is really considerable based on the fact that we know that 2020 was a tough year for all categories overall, especially the auto category. And I will say, looking into the actual brand experiences side of the house, about two thirds of all of the OEMs that ran with us in 2020 took advantage of a brand experience, mostly for vehicle launches. And then lastly, to sum it up, just wanted to kind of end on the true core benefits of Roku as an advertising platform. First and foremost, it's our scale. As we mentioned, it's the scale that comes from our Roku O and O, such as the Roku channel, in conjunction with the entire platform, which reaches 51 million households, 150 million streamers, and then expanded outside of that through one view. We're reaching four out of five broadband homes on the CTV in the CTV ecosystem through one view. Next is control. 
We know that the benefit of digital is targeting and measurement and the benefit of TV is being in a full screen lean back experience and TV like long form content. We're giving the both of you with the control to be able to optimize target and measure all in one place. And then lastly, measurement, knowing that all together, we're really providing measurement to make sure that every single impression and buy that you run with us is working harder for your brands. So again, thank you so much for having me. Um, looking forward to seeing your questions and hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Wow. Thanks so much, Christina. That was great. And I, I love the frequency play there with the first auto ad concept. That's pretty cool. So I'm sure you'll get some interest there. And um, would you be willing to put your contact information into uh, the chat box here just so people can reach out to you if they need to, if they have questions and whatnot? Yeah, I would love to. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you again. We appreciate your insight and, um, and your support of the event. And yeah, it was a very interesting presentation. So 